All right, Pisces, thanks for tuning in to your November of 2014 horoscope. My name is Athen. All right, so we've got Saturn changing signs this month. This is really the big emphasis for all of us. Now, normally Saturn changing signs would be a subtle energy, and we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't feel it right away, and it would be you know, something that you might feel over the next couple months. But it just so happens that uh, this month, when Saturn changes signs on the 2nd, the Sun, uh, Venus, and Mercury are all going to be following Saturn into that sign. So it makes it that this is actually very personal, where he's changing signs. And we are going to feel it, and we are going to feel that shift this month. Now, um, Saturn has been transiting your guys' eighth house. So a lot of you have been taking a very disciplined approach to the transformation process, which is great. And you guys are leveling up now, and uh, essentially it's leveling up of the Phoenix. Because the 8th to the ninth house is the phoenix rising up out of the ashes. So a lot of you who have put in a lot of work in your transformation process, gotten real deep and, and real meaningful in life and looked at the, you know, the hard truth, you might say, the reality of life, which is in essence a beautiful thing when you actually see the beauty of it and you're actually seeing beyond the veils of it. But it's taken maturity, it's taken a stern approach to it, you might say, uh, but looking at it in that you know, Saturn lens, which is very serious. So there's a nice lift here when Saturn leaves a house and goes into the next one. And especially when it's a you know, watery kind of house or someplace that Saturn's not you know, normally you know, natural to. So in this sense, you know, there's a freeing up here and the changes and, and the flow. You guys have graduated. You understand the changes of life and the necessary of how things have to, quote, die before they're reborn and, you know, that sort of thing and how to release. And, and you've become masters at this and to some extent or at least had enough exposure of it that you're comfortable with it. So congratulations on that. And now it's time for Saturn to move into a new part of your chart, which has to do with your path. So you have now you know, in essence, risen up out of the ashes, and now for the next two and a half years, you can work hard in building your path, restructuring your path, you might say, but really just laying the foundations to move forward, you know, in your spiritual direction, because the ninth house is spiritual. It's our higher connection. It's the connection to the divine. And um, now Saturn is here, so you guys can build practical steps and real steps to building a solid path and uh, that's the truth of the situation you know like I've been saying in my daily horoscopes the north node's been in Virgo so a lot of us have been really uh, grounding our spirituality and this is in essence what this is really about it's grounding your uh, higher self in essence here on earth and on a more mundane level this also has to do with expansion of your physical self and also of uh, your mind as well so some of you might be starting university or starting uh, some sort of wisdom learning or, or teaching uh, wisdom or something of that nature or religious groups might be joining religious uh, organizations or, or starting new ones or something of that nature. Uh, your work may be taking on a much more expansive orientation because, you know, Saturn naturally rules career, so there's something you know, that could become, become very expansive for you guys in that area. But overall, in the most general sense, uh, on the mundane level, it's structuring your expansion because the, the fact is is when you're expanding the more you can ground that the, because this is a higher chakra expansion is like a higher chakra thing you might think of it but Saturn is there the earth star you, you might say and grounding that energy and so when you have a grounded real approach to your expansion you can achieve a lot so my suggestion to you guys is really use that discipline that maturity of Saturn to build a solid foundation a solid path now for the next two and a half years for you guys and, um, and, you know, share too, you know, share all this philosophical wisdom that you might be gaining during this time, this connection, and um, make it a reality, whatever that means to you. Now, like I said, Venus and Sun and Mercury all shifting into the ninth as well. And uh, Venus is the first one to go. So I think you guys are ready for less of that eighth house transformational stuff and now ready to expand and so venus is there leading the way so that's usually an indication that psychologically you guys are willing and ready to go forward and move into the expansive expansive elements of life so enjoy it this month enjoy the expansion enjoy you know the expanding your mind seeing the optimistic but it's not so much optimistic because optimistic is still one side of the coin because then there's the pessimistic side. Seeing things realistically, which is what Saturn's going to be showing you. However, it's 
it's seeing that it's divine and that everything is in divine timing and there's a great sense in, in beauty in that and so uh, enjoy it and free yourself because the ninth house is about freedom and the more you expand the less you know uh, you restrict yourself then the more you can you know create abundance and have beautiful relationships and attract things to you because that's what Venus is all about now of course Saturn is there so it's just taking the mature approach to it the grounded approach but don't confuse that for limiting because Saturn is often associated with being a limiting planet but that's just a very one-sided way of looking at it. Saturn is just a grounded element so as long as you're, you've got two feet on the ground then you can expand all day long every day keep expanding and that's going to be very constructive for you guys but anyways with Venus they're wanting to expand you guys are ready for that then the Sun goes in into the ninth house mid-month so that's gaining a great sense of vitality in that. So travel, you know, anything that, may, that broadens your horizons, okay, this month do it. You know, I highly recommend it. Just make sure you're keeping both feet firmly on the ground, of course. Um, and uh, also philosophy, like I said, reading books that uh, it's not so much practical knowledge, it's philosophy, it's spirituality. A lot of you are going to become very spiritual over the next two and a half years as well with this kind of aspect but for those of you who are very uh, in tune with your spiritual path you know um, this month just be more creative with it and uh, mix things up a little bit and uh, bring people into it too with Venus there now Mercury is going to go into there later on in the month so the insights will then lead you into more of that uh, next month in December now we do have a new moon taking place in this ninth house so as these planets are going in there one by one something new is going to culminate perhaps it's a new perspective and for some of you it might be the new path that you're going to be working on for the next two and a half years and when I say your new path I mean consciously you become consciously attuned to it consciously aware of it because we're always on our path and so the only thing that's ever off our path is our consciousness our our believing we aren't or our consciousness isn't in alignment with it so this could be in a, this could be a time where, you, where your consciousness then aligns with it and it could be something external, an opportunity or something to get you moving into a new direction, but whatever it is, something new there. So that's really exciting, and it's very subtle, though, as these plants slowly shift. Really pay attention around the new moon for insights, for guidance, because any new moon in the ninth house is always about gaining insight and guidance. And the more you gather, the more you understand, the more you see, the more you feel, because it's very intuitive, very inner, the more it's going to create more... Uh, you know abundance for you in that area for the next two and a half years like I said this is like a microcosm this month for the next two and a half years with the Saturn transit so very exciting stuff there now Saturn does rule your guys' 11th and 12th house so this is also the time of really um, expanding your ideals expanding groups too you know Saturn ruling your 11th ideals groups uh, being more of service to others will help you expand yourself now in terms of your 12th house uh, spirituality so you know this is where the ninth house and the twelfth house it's an interesting you know mix they're both about spirituality the ninth house is about the um, connection which is the messages and the more what you might say the more uh, channeled or grounded perspective to that and the twelfth house is literally just surrendering so in general you'll notice for the for this month and into the next couple of years that you'll be um, surrendering you know your path and the more you just go with the flow okay because that's 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 how this path is going to unfold for you guys the more you just go with the flow surrender not try to hold on to the details and just flow with it you'll notice serendipitously things are aligning things are coming to you and the path is unfolding so work with this work with all this uh, now this month and uh, like I said with Venus and the Sun there you'll uh, certainly enjoy it and there's a great sense of vitality and energy that can be gained from it now in terms of uh, let's see in terms of Mars let's talk about that we have a, a very close conjunction well an exact conjunction on the 10th between uh, Mars and Pluto in your guys' 10th house so a lot of you actually are going to be going through some changes I feel in the work area or the career area but the 10th house is also everything being of service so um, whatever it is that you're doing that's being of service or part of the collective in some way in, in terms of what you're giving back um, is going through a restructuring this month and so you want to channel this energy and the best way to channel it is usually in the house that it's in so since it's in your 10th house you guys are going to go through changes in your work so 
there's a tremendous amount of energy to utilize into it. So be that willing participant to make those changes and you'll be able to channel a tremendous amount of energy into the work sector to make those changes. Now, uh, it is very, can be very powerful, can be very intense because this is Mars and Pluto and you know, it happens once every two, two and a half years. So, um, you know, it is, you know, once in a while this intensity comes into play but now's the time and it's the time for you to put it into your work in some way. So channel it in there and if you're finding there's some excess energy, it seems to be too much, um, work out, do something athletic or something to burn it off because like I said, it can be quite powerful. Now uh, let's talk about Mars's uh, rulership in your, uh, in your chart. Mars rules your ninth house and your second house. So essentially like I said the path is going to be sh changing for you guys and this is also emphasized again double fold with your ruler of your ninth going over Pluto so allow those changes to happen because there needs to be a restructuring okay something needs to adjust so be like I said that willing participant in that path because I feel that shift that's going to happen around the tenth in terms of your path um, is aligning you with it so um, flow with that and uh, align yourself consciously with it be that willing participant to let go of all that old stuff, all that old garbage about your path and all that stuff that's no longer serving you in order for you to clear the decks for you to allow more new and new insight and the rest of it to come to you. Now in terms of your second house, this is also about, um, the second house is about resources and finances but also about uh, your inner wealth, so your sense of worth basically. So your sense of worth essentially is going to be going through a transformation this month too. So, um, and in, in a more mundane level, this is also putting perhaps some changes that need to happen in the finance sector, whatever that means for you personally, uh, but uh, overall in your sense of self-worth. So just remember, you know, we all deserve abundance. As spiritual beings, as humans, we deserve abundance, and that's our birthright. And so when you step into that, you embody the frequency of that, and you can, you know, attract it to you. But for you, it's shifting, and it's getting rid of some old, some old belief systems or something that needs to change with that. And it's all just going to change. It's going to be different for all of you personally. Now, uh, we've got the uh, full moon taking place in Aries this month. <clears throat> so in that second house, and this is happening in the beginning of the month. So I wouldn't be surprised if something at the beginning of the month uh, causes you to, to really feel good, I think, actually, in terms of what you're worth, you know, what perhaps you're worth at your work or worth in your career or worth in your path in some way or at the university or whatever it is. That self-worth is really illuminated on the 6th, around the 6th during this full moon. So tap into that and tap into the tremendous amount of energy because you guys, what drives you, what motivates you is having that strong sense of self-worth. If you don't have that, then you, you lose the vitality and energy that um, Aries of the 2nd really provides. So uh, be strong, be initiative this month, and it's all coming from your sense of self-worth. So tap into that. Uh, that's really emphasized there for you guys and uh, you know um, on a more mundane level a lot of you might actually be coming to an awareness and it would be a great time to do anything in terms of your finances or resources or something of that nature and uh, looking at the reality of the situation and embracing it and feeling quite full about it I would say you know feeling at least quite um, like you can do something about it if, if it's a if you guys are for some of you who are you know in a um, uh, insecure situation right now with your finances or for those of you who are doing well in your finances this could be a time of really seeing the uh, fruits of that uh, so very beautiful time in regards to that now uh, we have the um, some some station directs taking place this month we've got Neptune going station direct on the 16th and Chiron going direct on the 23rd and this is all happening in your guys' 12th house so if it's felt like Things have been a little bit hazy. I mean, things are always hazy in the 12th house. But if it feels like you guys are a little bit um, uncertain about, you know, the flow of things and of your dream space and the psyche, maybe there's some insecurities that are coming up from your psyche or whatever it is. Because Chiron has been healing your guys' subconscious, essentially. And so a lot of work has been, a lot of healing has been taking place in your guys' dream space. And so uh, while it's been retrograde, it's been a real, it's like it, things are kind of on pause there because it's doing its introspective kind of thing. So if there's anything behind the scenes, anything around psychology and the psyche or anything like that, that it seems like it's been on hold or hasn't been flowing lately, um, things will then start to unlock and start to move forward for you mid to late month this month in regards to that. 
All right, guys, so I'm going to draw a card and see where Spirit would like a little more emphasis for you guys. Okay, Taurus. Well, Taurus is the earth element, and it is about nature, and it is about, you know, connecting to the five senses of the physical form. And uh, like you guys have heard me talk about uh, in the dailies, you know, this is, um, you know, big big role here with the north node in uh, Virgo at the moment. So all of us are becoming much more grounded with our path and now you guys are especially going to be leading the way with that for the next two and a half years you guys are going to be the embodiment of that really building a solid foundation moving forward and so uh, it comes from the consciousness you know your orientation towards all of this and Tor I'm saying this because Taurus rules your third house Taurus is when it comes to the third house very practical thinking very down-to-earth very real but also understanding the, the great sense of beauty and abundance that comes from when you're thinking positively, when you're thinking in alignment with, the, with what you want, with your path, with the universe. So this is really an indication I really feel is to see the beauty, see the enjoyment, see the sensual, sensual aspects of life and be it, feel it, embody it this month. And this is really going to, I feel, unlock a lot of the consciousness awareness around um, the shifts that are happening you know during the new moon and full moon and stuff like that so um, just all in all and, and you know what in general just enjoy yourself pamper yourself anytime I see Taurus come up it means just enjoy yourself uh, in a sensual way this month this month and perhaps uh, connect to nature and uh, you know walk around barefoot and that's another thing too you know the earth has electromagnetic uh, pulse and radiation to it and we can connect to that when we're firmly pressed and our, our bare feet touch the ground. So that's something that uh, might be helpful for some of you. But um, yeah, enjoy it, guys. Let me know if you have any specific questions, and I'll see you next time. Take care.